Thanks so much, guys. I'm Keith Mulder here at Legion's Field, Ogren Park. And what is the best way to kick off opening day here at the ballpark? How about a victory? Well, the Osprey did just that. Defeating the Great Falls Voyagers 7-4. to It was a great day throughout. They had some carnival games starting at the beginning. They had kids everywhere. It was truly a family affair. Let's get to those highlights. Keith, I am loving the bow tie. How is it feeling outside right now? Well, Stella, right now, if you asked me this question about a couple seconds ago, I would say it was quite hot. The sun was out, it was beaming, but now the clouds are starting to come in, and, and I think they might be here to stay. Nevertheless, baseball is back here in the Garden City. The Missoula Osprey taking on the Great Falls Voyagers for the home opener here in Missoula, and it's been a great day. There were some carnival games going on. Luis Gonzalez, a couple of MLB legends, are in attendance tonight. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later, but for now, here from Ogren Park at Allegiance Field, I'm Keith Demona. We'll send it back to you guys. So, needless to say, Riley Corcoran is quite the better golfer. Probably better golfer than I of the rest, right? I would say so. All right, folks. Ollie the Osprey, Keith Demona, live here from Allegiance Field at Ogren Park. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Thanks so much, guys. I'm here at Allegiance Field at Ogren Park. I got a special guest with me, Ollie the Osprey. Now, Ollie, tell the folks at home, how's the game been going thus far? Okay, he's excited, he's excited, and uh, we got some highlights that you caught live right here on SWX, our sister station. Let's roll the highlights, folks. Thanks so much, Stella. Once again, we are live here from Allegiance Field at Ogren Park, and as you alluded to, the rain is coming in, and unfortunately, it's raining on this opening day parade for the Missoula Osprey. It's unfortunate, but we might see some rain around 7 p.m., 7.25, which ironically enough is the start of the game, but they're going to play the game. There's no indication that they're going to cancel it. But with that, we're going to switch gears a little bit from something that's two hours away, the baseball game, to something that's 70 days away, the start of college football season. Now let's get to know one of the Grizzlies. So there's no 70 for the Bobcats, but there is a 70 for the Grizzlies. And earlier today, it must have just been a lucky day because he did something on the golf course that you need to see to believe, folks. Check it out. <laughs> Number seven, Canyon River. Dude! Wow! <laughs> Well, folks, if there's anybody that's luckier than Riley Corcoran, we want to see the video. Send us some video of a hole-in-one next time. But we got to wrap things up here from Allegiance Field at Ogren Park. The birds fly into the sunset victorious 7-4 to four, the final. I'm Keith DeMoto reporting live. We'll send it back to you in the studio. Thanks so much, guys. I'm here at the Missoula County Stadium for the Russ Pitcher Best of the West, it's the top 10 track meet here, and there's a reason why it's the top 10, because the top 10 from Western Montana will compete in every single event, and it has been quite good today. Taking a look at some of the results, Ashley McElmurray, she's been a revelation in the triple jump. She actually beat a meet record in the triple jump with over 39 feet, and then she also won the 110-meter hurdles. Sentinel, for some reason, some of these short-distance runners have been fantastic. Jaden Foster with a 11.07 in the 100-meter dash. And then taking a look at some other battles, it was Garrett Brown and Jacob Campbell battling it out for the shot put. And again, we'll have all those highlights coming up at the 9 and 10, and Issa Reed from Big Sky also won the pole vault, so showing out for the hometown crowd here. Uh, but with that, we're going to send it now to an interesting story from Adam Shalif who caught up with a Conrad High School rodeo athlete. And here's his story. Here's what he had to say. And as they say, it's not his first rodeo. Tucker Atkins is one of my... And a reminder about that, by the way, we have one more profile in May. That is when the voting starts. So make sure to go to our website, abcfoxmontana.com, to vote for your favorite athlete. And there'll be a special prize at the very end of it. I'm Keith DeMolder here from Missoula County Stadium. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Thank you very much, Keith. Well, and then mid-30s by Thursday. And that's look at your forecast. Now I'll send it over to our Keith DeMolder over at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Thanks so much, Megan. Yeah, speaking of weather, it finally feels like spring here at Washington Grizzly Stadium as the Grizz return for the first spring scrimmage of this year. I actually spoke with head coach Bobby Houck today and a couple of players after practice will hear their reactions at 9 and 10, but in the meantime, we're going to send it now to Des Moines, Iowa, where Sean Rainey has been working like a madman following the Montana Grizzly basketball team and their run in the postseason. The Montana Grizzlies basketball. Thanks so much, Sean, for that. So while the Grizz basketball season might be over, the spring football season is just beginning. They actually have spring break this next week, so they're going to take some time to recuperate from a tough spring season. I'm Keith DeMolder here from Washington Grizzly Stadium. We'll send it back to the desk. Thank you very much, Keith. Well, it's Friday, which means before we head... 
How's it going, Montana? I'm here at Dahlberg Arena live, and what a game it was. The ability for the Grizz to come back. They were down at one point, 41 to 32, and they made an unbelievable comeback to win the game. 66 to 64, the final, and it was unbelievable. Michael Ogine playing in his final game here at Dahlberg Arena, Missoula. He had an unreal performance, 22 points, and he had a couple of highlight reel dunks that you have to see to believe in. It was unbelievable. Carlos Hines as well had a great game for NAU, but ultimately the Grizz were too much for NAU. They pull off the W, 66-64 as I mentioned. Michael Lugine, what a way to finish it out here. But we have Annika Cook who's standing by with the latest from Bozeman. Annika, take it away. Welcome back, folks. Forget about fierce rivalry. Right at the break, we just had a UM dance team member get proposed to, and of course, love is in the air. She said, yes, it's February. And guys, the student section is one of the fiercest. Right now, they're a little bit uh, a little bit dazed and confused, but they're one of the fiercest in the country. This is one of the best rivalries in the nation for a reason, and they're hyped tonight. Back to you. Thanks, Keith. Yep. I'm here baseline with U.S. Senator John Tester. John, it has been an electric atmosphere here today. How does it feel to be here for the Brawl of the Wild? It's unbelievable. I'm telling you, you're walking this place, you can feel the energy. And you, I mean, a game that starts out with an alley-oop dunk, you know, it's a different level, and I just love it. First one of these games I ever went to, I was sitting in nosebleed heaven 30 years ago. It was a great game then, it's still a great game. Now, that, that game 30 years ago, there was some interesting thing that happened pre-game. Can you just tell us uh, what came down from the ceiling? Well, the, one of the military guys rappelled down with the game ball and handed it to the official before the... They say that every dog has its day. Well, how about a whole weekend? Here at the Missoula County Fairgrounds, the American Kennel Club is having its annual dog show, and while there might be some diamonds in the rough, every dog is best in show. The three-day event kicked off in Missoula on Thursday. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome inside to SWX's live presentation of Montana softball right here on the SWX Sports Network as the Montana Grizzlies host for the final time this year the Northern Colorado Bears. Keith the Motor Riley Corcoran live here from Grizzly Softball Field in beautiful Missoula, Montana. It's the final home series of the year, and unfortunately, Mother Nature raining on the parade. It sure is, but I tell you what, the game atmosphere is going to be intense. Keith the Mulder. Keith, what do you got? Welcome back to the game, everybody. Obviously, as we mentioned throughout the broadcast, tonight is the final home game of the regular season. Senior night was on Saturday, but tonight is the final game for a couple of these seniors here in Dahlberg Arena. Bobby Moorhead, Jamara Co., Ahmad Rory, Michael Ogine, and Donovan Dorsey playing their last games here in Missoula. So tonight is a very special night. And interestingly enough, you know, Rory and uh, Ako and Dorsey, they're all transfers from other schools, but they came to Montana because they believed in what Travis DeCure was teaching them. And it's gotta be an emotional night for all these guys. And they're trying to get a win out there. Back to you. All right, thanks, Keith. I'm here with Coach Secure. Coach, you're up by nine. What did you like in that first half from your boys? Uh, offensively, I thought we did a good job executing, attacking their zone. Uh, obviously, you got to make open shots, right? And we did that. Uh, and I also thought defensively, we did a good job. Uh, we just got to minimize our breakdowns or we'd be sitting in a little better spot. Tyler Hall, he had 15 at the break. What do you have to do to minimize a guy like that from Montana State? Just can't leave him open. We, we had three or four times where we just lost him. And he's going to make open shots. We got to minimize those. He was Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside to SWX's live presentation of Montana softball right here on the SWX Sports Network for this non-conference exhibition matchup between the University of Montana Grizzlies and the visiting Carroll College Saints. Keith the Mulder, Kenson Cross, we are live here from Grizzly Softball Field in beautiful Missoula, Montana, and it's a little bit cloudy right now, Kempson, but it was sunny a little bit earlier. Mother Nature kind of being weird today. Yeah, Mother Nature has not been kind to spring sports across Montana, across all levels. And it's an exciting exhibition we have on tap. I made the trip over from Helena this morning. It's snowing in the capital city, so at least it's not doing that here. <laughs> Thankfully, no snow as of yet, folks, but a great matchup on tap. And this season, Carroll College, they've been on the road. Now they come back home. Their offense has been here or there, but one player who's been pretty good as of late, Anna App Roberts. And wherever they've been playing, Anna App Roberts has been. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside to SWX's live presentation of Montana softball right here on the SWX Sports Network. We are live here from Grizzly Softball Field in beautiful Missoula, Montana for a doubleheader action, the battle for Montana between the University of Montana Grizzlies and the visiting University of Providence Argos. Keith DeMolder, Riley Corcoran here live from Missoula. Does it get it any better than this? Beautiful sunshine. It's certainly neat when there's an MT and right next to the yeah. name. So we'll see if Southworth can have a big performance today. In-state battle and another gal that is from Montana actually played right down the road on South Avenue 
Brooklyn Wisegram. What are you going to see from her today? I, at this point in the season, she's not a freshman anymore. This will be her 40 feet cog to the success here in the final couple weeks. Should be an exciting game, too. But for now, we're going to send it over to my interview with Tristan Ankenbach, who, by the way, is the Big Sky record holder for most strikeouts in a game. Check it out. I'm Keith Mulder here at Grizzly Softball Field, joined by Montana sophomore pitcher Tristan Achenbach. Tristan, you had an unbelievable game. It's on everybody's mind. 16 strikeouts, big sky record as well as Montana program record. Take me through that game. Yeah, it worked, I guess. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that record. Thank you. Uh, looking forward to today's games. You guys are playing Providence. You're a local kid from Great Falls. How does it feel to play a team like Providence? Some gals you knew growing up. Yeah, I know Coach Joey pretty well. And it's interesting because this weekend, the Grizz are going to be traveling a lot. They're playing at Portland State and then at Sacramento State. And then we'll also be traveling down to Boise for the Big Sky Tournament. That is a lot of traveling and some people complaining that maybe it's just a little bit too much traveling for the Grizz. They're going over 3,000 miles. Guys, that's 170,000 basketball courts. That's how long that is. I'll send it back to you. Thank you for putting that in perspective, Keith. Now I understand so much better. I didn't know the miles, but 170,000 basketball courts, I totally understand that now, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. Games the regular season. Final home stand for a couple of these seniors. Mm -hmm. Seniors also for Northern Colorado have been pretty good, too. What do you have to say about some of these senior pitchers? I tell you what, that's who has led the way for the Grizzlies all year long. Colleen Driscoll, Maddie Stensby. When you talk with Coach Michael, she says it's a driving force of consistency, and that's what you want from your senior leaders. We're going to see both of them on the mound today. Colleen Driscoll has really picked it up a season high in strikeouts on Monday. Yeah, but looking at the other side, though, the Bears, they also have an ace. Absolutely. Valerie Vidal, she is there driving force as far as consistency and how many innings she can pitch. She threw 215 innings last year, Keith. She's on pace to do that again. She nearly starts every game inside the circle, and she will be pretty good for Northern Colorado. Fantastic. We thank you for joining us right here on SWX. First pitch coming your way between Northern Colorado and the University of Montana. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. My presentation of Montana softball right here on the SWX Sports Network. Grizzly softball field the location for this one in a big sky battle of Northern Colorado and Montana. We thank you for joining us. Keith DeMolder, Riley Corcoran here from Missoula and Riley. It's a little bit windy, it's a little bit cold, but softball really heating up here in the Treasure State. It is, and the, the intensity of what we're going to see. An injury update, by the way, folks. Hannah Van Domlin, a starting pitcher as well, is a great hitter. She is going to be out today. A little bit some back spasms she had recently. Um, how big is that a loss for Providence, both being a hitter and a pitcher? It's big time because she leads the team this weekend. Yeah, these couple games against Montana, sort of a precursor to big couple games against Carroll. Speaking of Montana, and speaking of two-way pitcher slash hitters, Maddie Stensby, she's been a revelation this year. She really has, and we knew what she could do inside the circle. The lefty was so pretty as far as just being able to start and relieve, just so versatile front early. Should be an exciting game. Riley Corcoran, Keith DeMolder live here from Grizzly Softball Field. Game one, first pitch coming your way in just moments. The state clawing back into this one, down just five with two and a half remaining. We go to the sidelines, Keith the Mulder with an injury uptake. Yeah, guys, Keljan Blevins was in the tunnel getting his ankle wrapped up. His shoe got put back on his foot, so he's trying to get back into this game as soon as possible. And it'd be a huge get for Montana State right now. Blevins with 18 points. Welcome, everyone, live to Ogren Park, Allegiance Field. I'm Sean Rainey, joined by the Keith DeMolder. And uh, we had two sets of fireworks here tonight, Keith. One during the game and the fireworks show afterwards, sponsored by SWX Montana, by the way. But, Keith, uh, I called the game yesterday. The Osprey got the 2-1 to win over the Idaho Falls Chuckers, who are the best team by far, so far, record-wise, in the Pioneer League. And uh, they got the, a big 2-1 to win. And they got another walk-off win here today. Um, started out slow, but then they uh, turned it on at the end. Yeah, absolutely. It was a fantastic game through and through. We knew coming in that was going to be a pitcher's duel, given the fact that Idaho Falls is the best pitching team inside the Pioneer League. But at the same time, both teams have great bats. And the interesting thing that I saw throughout this game was the main guys, the you know Pigueros, they weren't hitting that well. And we saw also for, uh, for Idaho Falls that main guys for them they weren't hitting either and uh but it was these utility guys the guys that don't get everyday reps that came off the bench the seven eight nine guys that were getting on base and they were scoring runs so it was a 3-0 idaho falls lead and then 3-1 heading into the bottom of the ninth inning and that's when the osray turned it on yeah i was surprised that they kept in austin manning i mean he is a usc guy so i had to give him a little bit of credit um but they kept him in i'm surprised a little bit too long the fact that 
He is having some trouble at the end of the bottom of the eighth, and they had a guy who was actually warming up, and we're having some technical difficulties here with our, our light. But I was surprised at that the fact that they kept him in in the bottom of the ninth. You could see he was kind of wavering a little bit, getting in some large counts, some 3-2, three, 3-1 three, counts, and allowing guys to get on base via the walk and via the hit. So I was surprised they kept him in, but got to credit a lot to the Osprey hitters. They come back in back-to-back -back games against one of the best pitching teams inside the Pioneer League. So got to give them a lot of credit for staying resilient. You know, it's interesting, the, uh, the hospital is just blocks away. They're the cardiac kids. They're going to give me a heart attack. Yeah, Carranza with the walk-off <laughs> double. It almost looked like um, the plate, the plate, he was out. But we yeah, uh, we won't close, talk about that close. here. Um, but that was a big win for the Osprey because now they pull to an even 9-9, nine and nine, so they're 500. They get to play Idaho Falls two more times here. It's going to be on the road. So, hey, you never know. If you win those two, they end up getting four in a row against them and cutting their uh, eight-game lead in half, and then... Maybe some momentum, and who knows, down the uh, second half of this first half of the season. That's what I was going to say is coming into this game, or at least coming into the series, Idaho Falls seemed invincible. I mean, they started the year undefeated, and now the Osprey are the ones that have beaten them twice. The Osprey now even 9-9. Nine and nine. The Idaho Falls Chuckers, they're still a pretty nice record, I believe 13-3 and three, uh, as it stands right now. But the ability to beat the best team in the league, the way that they have, they've come back, they've been resilient, and they've kept the game close. I mean, it wasn't like a blowout win or anything like that, and the pitching has been in it for a majority of the game. So a lot of positives to take away. They're going on the road, and it, it's one thing to win at home, but to win on the road, especially against an Idaho Falls team that I believe their average attendance is 2,500 people. So... You know, that's how many I think we got here tonight at Ogren Park. So it'll be one thing to win at home, but if they can win on the road, then this Osprey team could be legit. The Osprey walk it off. They win 4-3. to three. They pull to an even 9-9 nine and nine as their record. Very exciting night here at Ogren Park Allegiance Field. For Keith Mulder, I'm Sean Rainey. We'll send it on over to Chris. Thanks so much. I'm Keith Mulder here in Florence, Montana for the Class A state title game. And unfortunately for the Bitterroot Bucks, the Vauxhall Spurs took home the dub 11-3, the final. And for the Cinderella story, the Bitterroot Bucks, they were unbelievable. They were last place in the regular season. They lost out of districts, but because they were the host team, they had a chance and they took it all the way to the title game. But unfortunately, they couldn't pull off the dub. Their head coach, Austin Nogle, he couldn't be prouder. Let's take a listen to what he had to say after the game. Oh, I'm incredibly proud of my guys. Uh, I'm Keith DeMolder here at Glacier High School in Kalispell for the Western AA Divisional Basketball Tournament. We had the quarterfinals today. Let's get to the highlights. It's a battle for Missoula first up. The Hellgate Knights and Sentinel Spartans doing battle in the girls' bracket. And much like the regular season, the Knights come out on top again, 44-26 to this time. Emma Blakely was all over defensively for Hellgate, while Lexi Deaton kept the Spartans in it for a little bit with her clutch shooting. But Hellgate wins again, moves on to play Helena in the semis tomorrow. Moving on to the home team, Glacier taking on Helena on the boys' side. It was all Bengals in the first half, thanks to clutch three-point shooting. Connor Mergel had two, and Pierce Brown hit four threes in the first half alone. Alex Johnson was also a big factor for Helena, as the Bengals tank the Wolfpack 46-30 and will battle the number one seeded Hellgate Knights tomorrow. And the game that just wrapped up, the battle for Kalispell between Glacier and Flathead was utter domination by Glacier early. The Bravettes scored just one bucket in the entire first half. The bigs for Glacier, just too much. The Bravettes would claw back, they would get within a couple points, but the Wolfpack would cruise to the W and the next round to take on the winner of Capital and Big Sky later tonight. That's going to wrap it up here from Glacier High School. I'm Keith DeMolder. We'll have more highlights coming up in just a bit, but for now, we'll send it back to the studio. I'm Keith DeMolder here at the Butte Civic Center for the MHSA Class AA quarterfinal action. It has been a wild day one. Let's get to the highlights. The first game on the slate was Helena and Bozeman as the Hawks are coming in hot. The first quarter was tight, but then Bozeman pulled away as double-double machine Ryan Lonergan scored 18 and pulled down 12 as Helena shot just 5 for 31 from downtown. The Hawks move on to play Billings West tomorrow. It was an emotional game throughout for the entire team, including point guard Deshaun Mendoza, who shared a tender moment post-game. Well, that's huge. You know, this is what we work for to get to this tournament. And like I went in the locker room after the game, and guys are kind of... A little bit down a little bit, I don't know why, but I'm like, guys, you just won a game for the state tournament. That's what we're here for. So I'm really proud of the kids, and again, we'll reboot, and we'll, we'll be ready to go tomorrow. 
For the first time in 16 years, the Hellgate Knights played in the state tournament and made the most of their opportunity, absolutely blasting the senior Bronx 61 to 34. Emma Blakely scored a game high 16 points as Hellgate scored early and often thanks to their transition offense. Oh, this is awesome. This one's for the books. The girls worked hard last week. They've been working hard since the beginning of the season. We came here, we executed, we played great defense, got lots of rebounds, and we finished the game. And of course, what would the big dance be without actual dancing? The Bozeman dance team delights the crowd during the intermission, but next game on tap was West and Glacier. Much like their male counterparts, the West girls squad was also ready to play. The West sisters Ty Lee and Tyra Manuel went off, finishing in double figures and gave the Golden Bears the W 41 to 20. But back to Missoula teams we go as Great Falls and Sentinel were fierce competitors throughout. The game was within a few points for a majority of it, but ultimately the clutch buckets from the Bison late helped Great Falls secure the victory 57 to 46 and a spot in the semis tomorrow. We now head across town as Hellgate battles Skyview and the number one seed Knights were tested early. Skyview kept things within just points all half and tied things at the half 25-25. But then Raleigh Wooster started doing Raleigh Wooster things, hitting threes left and right. He ended the first half with 19 and the game with 32. The Knights pull off the W late, 65-56. I think just on ball screens and then teammates kind of moving, we were all just getting each other open. We played good D, better on ball D than we did the first half. Uh, boxed out and got rebounds, that was the biggest thing. Especially in the first half, Logan Riddle, Matt Baldridge, when we were in foul trouble, came in, played really good minutes for us, played hard D, and then Richard Deedon coming off four fouls, came in, had a couple buckets and some stops for us. So that's going to wrap it up here from the Butte Civic Center. We'll have more action coming up later tonight as well as tomorrow as state basketball rolls on from Class AA. I'm Keith Mulder here in Butte. We'll send it back to the studio. Thanks so much, I'm Keith Mulder here from the Double Arrow Lodge in beautiful Sealy Lake, Montana for the Boys and Girls Class C State Golf Championships. And coming into today, it was all about Caden Hill from Manhattan Christian and Ennis's Landry Palatichuk who were leading, but the question was, could they carry the momentum from day one into day two? That answer, simply, yes, they did. Let's first start with the boys' side and Hill. He was doing his thing through the front nine. He had a beautiful tee shot on three and then had a beautiful birdie stroke from about 40 feet away he ended the front nine just three over par with a 39 hill with double bogey on the 12th hole the whole group really had trouble on that hole but he rebounded nicely he ends up winning by multiple strokes here's what he had to say after the win it was just like i did it again there here we go um it was straight uphill i knew exactly where, how it was going to break and just had to hit it and it felt good now moving on to the girls' side, it was a battle yesterday between Jillian Fry and Palatichuk, as I mentioned. Apparently, Landry and Jillian have quite the friendship. They actually were friends, and they were battling last time in the state championships. And Palatichuk this time would get the best of Fry. She would end the front nine plus nine, but then she would shoot a 40 on the back nine, and she won the championship. She was crying and hugging Jillian afterwards. It was quite the scene. Uh, let's hear from her as well as her coach after the win bittersweet because I never I don't like Zena as a coach and that's going to wrap it up here from Sealy Lake Palatichuk and Hill are your state champions with that we're going to send it back to the studio